now, folks, we got crude oil up about 6% at 109.50. We were up as high as 112.51. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You can reach Teddy, folks, every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. I've been waiting for this one, Teddy. Good morning, man. Good morning. How about the crude market today, huh? I don't know. How about it, man? I, I haven't noticed it. Where are we, Teddy? Yeah, quite well, a market. We're up $15 indeed, man. Listen, in, since uh, Sunday night. That's what we and are. Congrats on the, the call that's been out there for longer than I can remember, man. Um, quite a market, quite a run-up. And you've been talking about $100 crude for a while. And, man, we mm -hmm. just blew through that remark. So give us a little take on what you're looking at for crude now that we're sitting at $110 uh, with well, everything going on, Teddy. I think we definitely have, well, after last night's speech, we know for sure now that the solidified bull rally in oil is not going to stop. It's going to keep on going in a big way, too. Like, we blew through $100. I think, you know, I said after $100, maybe we'd have some stability, you know, because people would sure. start. We're not going to have a chance for people to check their pocketbooks and not buy gas to control this, this thing. We're going up to 150 and if these policies, especially with the uh, what's going on with the Ukraine, keep continuing with the, the tone that we have right now, we'll see over $150 a barrel easily very, very soon. So, and just um, what, I mean, what tone is that? I'm not really aware when you say that. Okay, well, you look at last night. You put. We know that in the last week we put all these sanctions on Russia. We also sure. announced our country and these other countries that any country that deals with Russia, sanctions will be put on them. Correct. I mean, this is something that's been going on now for a week. They've been speaking about this. They're dealing with the banks and what have you. Sure. Well, we're in violation of our own sanctions. We're buying oil from Russia right there. So until we change that tone and stop buying oil from Russia and turn our pumps back on, this is not stopping. We're, we're paying for Putin's war right now. OK, so this is not going to stop. Oil will not go down until we start pumping, you know, and now you have China kicking up their heels. Japan's worried, you know, and they are, there's already talk that Japan wants us, you know, they're part of NATO as well, you know, I mean, they're part of this whole fight against, you know, China and Russia, supposedly. What happens when China kicks up their, hair, their heels with Taiwan, you know, are we going to help give oil to Japan? Well, no, they're going to have to deal with Russia. Where else are they going to get it from? You know, the closest place they can get it from is there, you know, so, I mean, this this is going to continue to escalate, you know, and as far as the price of oil, I can't even begin to see why it would not continue to go higher. You know, I mean, there's nothing there's nothing set right now that would do that. You know, we would have to start sure. turning our pumps, you know, to tell the Middle East to pump more, which they are. What's that going to do? I mean, that's not going to change things, you know, and as far as these sanctions. Um, if you think that Putin's not selling oil to other countries, well, he's selling it to us, so he's still bringing in money, you know, and they don't deal in rubles, so it doesn't matter that the ruble's crashing, you know. I mean, you have a commodity that you have, I mean, the, the strength of the dollar right now is there, you know, and the, the biggest vulnerability we have now is that oil is helping to keep the dollar strong. Also, with our interest rate posture, that's helping to keep it strong. What happens if all of a sudden we did turn on the pumps and what have you, and the, and the price of oil collapses and gets back down to 30 bucks. What does that do to the U.S.? It's good for the consumer, but to the dollar, it could have a big impact on the dollar, you know? So then all of a sudden, the dollar, it starts to go down, you know? See, right now we're in an inflationary period. The dollar's strong. We can handle inflation to a degree. What happens when you have inflation and then you have a devaluing dollar? That's gonna be very dangerous for our economy especially the forex markets yeah it's it's pretty remarkable everything going on right now um with the influences the variants uh the volatility mm -hmm. and, and and crude showcasing it most men um I've talked about many times man it's you know of all the things going back and i'm just thinking out loud teddy mm -hmm. the, the the oil trade might have been the best one going back to the covid lows man because you go from mm -hmm. negative 30 40 bucks a barrel man and it's been basically a one-way trip up to 110 bucks i think we've all learned a lot right um over the last two years about, uh, you know, unfortunately, how mm -hmm. the the world comes out of a pandemic, man. And we were all very wrong um, on mm -hmm. a lot of facts as we started sure. this off. Uh, sure. So 
Jumping from crude, we jump to some of the other Forex markets over in the okay. world. What are you looking at with, man, it's like I, I've never experienced a geopolitical issue like this in my lifetime um, mm -hmm. in terms of just uh, everything in play worldwide, all the, all the kind of players that are, that are piling on and how that's impacting some of the currencies. What are some of the pairings that you're looking at most this week? Uh well, this week, I'm definitely looking for the yen. The yen, I think, is going to break out to the upside finally. It's been chopping around now for the past few weeks, but with, especially with what's going on with these tensions, I would expect them to start to break out to the upside, pushing the 117, 118 barrier. Um, if we do break out to that upside level, that's a very good monthly and weekly um, breakout area also to help maintain the, the bullish trend. Um, everything that's going into play with higher oil and, and also everything else that's going on geopolitically, this helps to keep the bull market in the US dollar yen going. So I would say buy dip posture, looking for higher move highs. You know, 122 is still on my, on my radar. Um, as far as the euro, that's a different story. The euro is not looking so hot right now. I think that you're going to start to see a continual erosion of the euro and starting to hit support more and more as this war goes on. Um, the Swiss, Ironically, you know, we heard what they did yesterday as far as with the Russian freezing bank accounts and what have you and stuff like yes. that. Um, I, I don't think that that's necessarily going to be the biggest influence on their currency right now. I think it has more to do with what's going on with the EU and them having to help support the EU during this uh, crisis, which um, I don't think is going to end anytime soon. You know, I mean, here's the one thing about Russian history you have to remember, um, whether it's in the past hundred years or even going back hundreds of years, nothing with Russia ends quickly, just doesn't. You know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of momentum on their side right now. We don't need to get into the, the points of the argument, but the more, you know, I mean, especially with NATO, you know, the more we build up in these countries, the more of a friction point we're coming to, you know, so it's hard to ask someone else to turn around and back down when you're getting in their face more and more, you know, so I mean. This, I think these tensions are going to continue to weigh on the euro. Now, the British pound, I'd be very careful with that one. I still think that that's a neutral currency and has a potential, especially if oil continues to rally. There's a good chance that you'll see the British pound rally, actually. You know, so there's a big divergence going on in the currencies. And I would also look at the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar to continue to um, go to the upside. I think that they've rounded out a bottom. I don't think that, I mean, I don't want to call a bottom. But right now, with all the influences, and especially with inflation and commodity prices, as Australia comes back online and starts delivering more and more, especially to China, which is going to be consuming again at a rapid rate, these are things that are going to help with their currency. So that's why I'm very really leery of what's going to happen with the U.S. dollar over the course of the next year. I think it's going to stay strong in the short run, but we're starting to lose strength versus some of the major currencies. So if we do have a bottoming out period with the Australian dollar per se, and also the pound, if those go against us, dollar's gonna get hit really hard. Well, Teddy, we're gonna talk to you in a week, man, and yep. uh, who knows where oil's gonna be by that yeah. point, man. But listen, we right. appreciate the conversation as always, exactly. man, and I look forward to talking to you next Wednesday, Teddy. All right, take care, Tommy. Appreciate you too, it. have a great week.